If you've seen one of Shiraishi Koji's movies, particularly in his found footage or mockumentary genre, then chances are good that you know what to expect from further entries. I dare say most people are aware of Shiraishi from Noroi, The Curse, an absolutely fantastic film that deserves all the praise it gets and something I hope to cover here in the future as well. But this week we're going to be looking at a slightly lesser known work of his, another that I massively enjoyed. Cult. Cult first released in Japan on July 20th, 2013, although it was filmed in 2012 and technically debuted first at the Brussels International Fantastic Film Festival on April 4th, 2013, several months before its Japanese release. It was part of a three-movie project by W. Field called Next Horror, which intended to showcase a film from an up-and-coming director, a director in the middle of their career, and a veteran director. It came with the tagline, Kyofu wa noriyutsuru, which roughly translates to fear is transferable. But what is this film about? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Cult slots nicely into Shiraishi's specialty of found footage films, and this one takes three real actresses who play versions of themselves, as they host a paranormal TV show that investigates a strange case where a mother and daughter seem to be haunted. If you wanted to sum it up without nuance, you could call it paranormal activity in Japan, but that doesn't really do it justice, and ignores the more Japanese aspects of the story as well. The three main actresses, while not massive stars, have had long and consistent careers in Japan, so having them play versions of themselves was certainly an interesting choice that helped lend to the realism of the project. They're filming for a television show, which gives us an excuse to have cameras everywhere as well. But this isn't just a simple setting that's then forgotten either. The fact that this is being filmed for a television show is constant throughout, and the staff even come into play at points as well, helping propel the story and even unveil secrets when necessary. They don't just set cameras and then fade away. They're part of the story too. Our three actresses, one of whom you may recognise from Carved 2 as one of Kuchisake Onna's sisters, by the way, investigate the Kanada household, where strange things are afoot. We see footage of various hauntings and they decide to check it out with a priest to exercise whatever evil spirit is lurking there. But naturally, things don't go as intended. In fact, the more time they spend in the house, the more they realise that this is no regular haunting. Our first priest isn't strong enough to do anything about it, so he summons a much more powerful priest to get the job done. But that priest can't do diddly squat either, and while all this is going on, one of our actresses, who it turns out possesses strong supernatural abilities, loses the plot a little and refuses to go back into the house. All according to Keikaku, of course, as it turns out that she has potentially been possessed by something inside to help carry out some work on the outside. In the end, it gets so bad that they have to summon a rather peculiar shaman that has no name and, when pushed, suggests they just call him Neo, like Neo from The Matrix. But this guy is very much the real deal, and they soon discover that what's going on in the haunted Canada household is far, far more dangerous and life-changing than they could have ever expected. Not just for the residents in the household, but perhaps humanity itself. I first watched Cult not long after it came out in 2013 or 14. It's the type of film that, thanks to its presumably cheap budget, doesn't really stand out that much as you're watching it. The special effects are honestly horrific at times, and the acting is never top tier either. But these things are quickly forgotten as you're drawn into the story and this film is a prime example of story trumping all else. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, the special effects are laughable. Yeah, the acting is cringe at times, but wow, you can't stop watching it. You can't stop thinking about what's going on. And when the film finally seems to have resolved everything peacefully, you get smashed in the face with the troll hammer and the real ending starts, 
and it's more horrifying than you could have ever expected. And it's so worth the trip to get there. After watching this film the first time, I somewhat forgot about it. I say somewhat because over the years, scenes from it have popped back up in my head at random times that made me go, oh yeah, what was that film? I really need to watch it again. I forgot the title, but not the movie itself. It's been nearly 10 years now since I first saw it, and those scenes lingered in my mind all this time. I watched it again just recently, not knowing that it was the same film, and pretty much as soon as it started it all came rushing back to me. Ah, it was Cult! Thank God I found it again. And this is definitely a film that deserves a second watch. This is one of those rare films where the ending tops pretty much everything else in the film, and when it comes, you realise that the seeds were sown the whole way throughout and you probably didn't notice them because they seemed unimportant at the time. But everything was tightly planned and right in front of you the whole time. When you watch it a second time, you get to see all those things happening as they happen, and knowing the ending that's coming, there's an extra layer of chill that settles over you. This isn't just a regular haunting, it's far, far worse and knowing the twist, or rather, twists at the end, allows for an entirely new experience the second time around that's just as great as the first time. This film is also so, so Japanese. If Japanese horror is your thing, then you'll want to check this film out. It doesn't just feature evil spirits and priests, but it also delves into, as the title suggests, Japanese cults. Something the country has dealt with for quite some time now, but has been particularly sensitive towards since the horrifying Aum Shinrikyo incident on the Tokyo subway in 1995. This combines with curses, evil spirits, and potentially goes all the way up to Kamisama at the top of the chain. And remember, Kamisama aren't always benevolent. Some can be downright nasty pieces of work, and considering we're in a horror movie, well, always expect the worst. The character of Neo also presents a fairly typical eccentric shaman that honestly reminded me a lot of Temple Born Tisan from Ni Channel. The type of guy who exudes cool, calm, and collected, dresses and looks more like an idol or movie star than a traditional priest or monk, but possesses real powers beyond that of even the most powerful priest, and gets the job done, even if he's a little rude or eccentric along the way. He's the type of character I generally roll my eyes at, but they manage to make him work in the context of the film, and watching him turn the demon bomb back on those who created it, for example, was a great moment that just keeps on giving as the movie goes on. Japanese reviews for this film tend to lean towards the positive as well, although it obviously has people that sit on either side of the fence. Shiraishi's ability to make a B-movie into top-class entertainment by using ridiculous and powerful techniques is superb, said one review that pretty much sums up how I feel about his mockumentary films as well. Other reviews compared it to the work a student film might produce, and criticised the poor effects and bad acting. Others also felt it just wasn't scary, perhaps thanks to both of the above. It's hard to disagree with them, but at the same time, I feel that the movie's strength actually lies in the atmosphere it builds. Yeah, it's cheap, and yeah, it's poorly acted, but the atmosphere remains tense regardless. At least for me, I was constantly waiting to see what would happen next because things just felt wrong. It's not something you can pinpoint exactly, but things don't feel right, and you want to figure out why. You may, at points, also suddenly remember the movie's title and think, wait, what the hell does a cult have to do with any of this? It adds to that feeling of wrongness that doesn't get explained until the film's real ending. And for me at least, it didn't disappoint. As one reviewer on Amazon said, I know it's not to everyone's tastes, but I loved it. But what did you guys think of this one? Have you seen Cult? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and 
I'll see you again next time.